You forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, The Muppets Most Wanted is coming to theaters this Friday, and you know what that means? Many, many cameos in this podcast. That would be great, actually. <laughs> I would love if we could pull that off. Unfortunately, I didn't call anyone, so sorry. This Darn. is another episode of Don't F with the Original. With Nicholas, I'm the big game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. Now you know the drill, people. When there's a new movie coming out that's part of the big franchise, we take the movie that started it all and give it a look to see what we can expect from the new movie. Yeah. And in this case, that means 1979's The Muppet Movie. Indeed. Directed by James Frawley uh, and the entire Jim Henson production company really being actively involved in it, I imagine. Indeed, of course. All right, so uh, The Muppet's Movie is actually an origin story. Yeah. Uh, which uh, surprised me, because believe it or not, I had completely forgotten this movie. I, th I think I might have seen it on TV when I was a kid and then... Yeah. It meld with Muppets in New York and all of them. And Something like that, yeah. yeah you know? But, uh, so re-watching it, I discovered, oh, this is an origin story on how the Muppets came together and came to have the Muppets show. Yeah. Or, as Kermit says, approximately. Roughly, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's really, really much of a road movie where Kermit goes from the swamp to California uh, in the longest way possible and then meets each of the Muppets one by one. And it's a sort of series of sketches with lots of cameos, as you pointed out. Yeah. And there you have it. He's being hunted down uh, by a guy who wants to use Kermit uh, to be the spokesperson of his uh, Frog's Legs uh, fast food company. That sounds delicious, actually, honestly, but still. It's kind of weird because Kermit's there, but still, still those, <laughs> those front legs look delicious. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this is not a plot-centric movie. This is a joke-centric movie. Yeah, it's kind of meta as well because at the beginning you see them, oh, we're going to go watch the Muppet movie, and they're sitting, although it's still the movie, and then the Muppet movie starts, so it's a movie within the movie, and in that movie they do the beginning of the Muppet movie, so it's like three layers of movie within the movie, it's like Wars in Inception at this point. Well, actually four, <laughs> we are at Inception, because there's four, because at one point, uh, the band reads the script to the movie that is their life, not the movie that they're making within the movie of the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, this is like equal to Inception at this point. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean... But yeah, it was kind of, yeah, a little meta there. It was kind of, it was amusing, you know. Uh, there's one point I didn't quite like. It, it kind of slowed down there in the middle when they meet Miss Piggy. And, you know, the whole romance thing, you know. It, I thought it, it was, there was a lot more emphasis put on that than, you know, the rest of the characters. Even though, okay, on the show she has a crush on him. And, you know, he's kind of, eh about it, but yeah, I don't think you needed like 40 minutes to explain that, really. Well, it wasn't 40 minutes, in, in, in fairness. It, uh, it felt pretty long. Though. It's Actually, it's not that long. It's one song, essentially, what it comes down to, because, yeah. you know, he meets her, and at that point, I don't consider that being focused on the pl subplot of their love affair, because okay. there's they're, they're going after Gonzo, who's on the balloons and everything, so other all stuff's right. going on at the same yeah, time. Right. Then they go at a restaurant, and then it's all about that. They have that song, and then he, uh, she gets kidnapped, and then it becomes back to the plot with the uh, uh, the frog legs guy. I, mean, I, I still consider that kidnap plot kind of part of their story, though, because may maybe that's why I thought it was a little long. Because also, it was her occasion to show that she could, you know, fight. Apparently, in, in the Muppet Show, she used to like hit people, and you know that was a funny gag. I did not need to see her go Matrix style on a bunch of different guys. You well, know? this was before <laughs> the Matrix, but yeah, I know. But I know, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> It was, at one point, I was like, okay, end this scene, please, but... Well, it's two scenes. So you got yeah. the song, yeah. and you got the uh, the rescue plot, yeah. so it's two skits out of, like, something like 18 skits, so yeah. like, that's definitely not 40 minutes out of an, an hour and a half movie. But still. But, um, so it's it's maybe twice as long as every each given character has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for me, because I felt the same way, like, I felt like, oh, God, enough of this shit. I, I felt the same way you did, but okay. I'm just saying, objectively, it's not that long. Yeah. The problem is that the song that Miss Piggy sings, it's awful. Yes. It, it, it's it's the worst song in the movie. It feels like it lasts forever. Especially since all the other songs are really quite good, in yeah, fact. Yeah, and they're fun, and they're, you know, 
quirky as well, and hers is just like, oh, you're not saying anything here. <laughs> Let's move on. That's it. So that's the thing. The first kid is not particularly good. It has Steve Martin as a randomly annoyed uh, waiter, which was mildly yeah. funny. Yeah. I uh, didn't care for the shorts, but... <laughs> yeah. Because um, no, because I, I feel like his joke would have been funnier with less quirk. Like, and so the shorts was like, okay, well, now you're assaulting me with craziness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then it, it breaks into the song that is neither funny nor f uh, nor just good or well sung because obviously Frank Oz, who's doing Miss Piggy's voice, can't quite keep a pitch when he's doing that high pitched voice. Though. Yeah, that's probably true. So yeah, it's like the worst scene in the movie, and I think that's why, for me at least, that's why it felt long because it, it was just bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But having said that, it's a low point in, a, in an overall very charming movie. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like the beginning of the movie more than uh, the later skits, mostly because I find uh, the heart of the movie really works when it's just Kermit and Fozzie Bear. Okay. They have such great dynamic together. Uh, yeah. Because they, they already have like the, like the idiot and his long-suffering friend, essentially. <laughs> like, instantly they have sort of that dynamic. And, um, you know, they meet the band, so it's not like there is just them two, but it you have all the building blocks for good comedy with just these two. Yeah. And then when they start added Gonzo and then um, Miss Piggy and all of that, the, what happens is that it's it, it gets a bit crowded. And so, like, oh, I'm not getting in uh, as much of each of the characters because of okay. that. I did, well, I didn't mind that that as much as well because it, it was kind of like the chaos that you remember from the Muppet show where it was mm. like always a bunch of them together and you know, right. it was like a, a show that was like so poorly run like so many things just happened and you know the band got destroyed and stuff like that just you know random random stuff that happened in your show so you like you kind of felt that chaos that I remember from the show that I really like like when they're trying to get to the audition and the, the woman doesn't want to let them pass and you know she has allergies and they, they're all like shooting their mouth about allergies and they're all saying different random stuff. And I was like, yeah, okay, I remember that from them not, not, not being able to focus on one thing they're saying. So I remember that from the show and I really, I really enjoyed those, those bits. Mm. No, yeah, no, and it's like, look, you, you, you couldn't have made a Muppets movie without featuring at least a core cast of the Muppets. Like if it had yeah. been a Fozzie Bear Kermit movie, you better damn well call it Fozzie Bear and Kermit, not the Muppets. I know. It's not so much a qualm as an observation that, oh, wow, it started getting crowded. Uh, but you're right. It that's yeah. what the Muppets are about. Yeah. No, I understand. I, you really, you know, you really felt the movie sh turning from them. You know, almost I can't say a buddy cop, but just <laughs> a buddy road trip comedy to like, oh, you know, you, you could see it move a little bit and then again split in the middle, but this big thing. Because yeah, he meets Ralph during the whole Miss Piggy thing and talks to him and. He just in, ends up in the car, you know, no explanation. Hey, he's there now. And there's more and more people. And you're like, oh my God, what's happening here? And just, you can really see the splitting between, you know, very few people. And all of a sudden, like, what are all these guys doing here? It's crazy. <laughs> no, it's, 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 I, yeah, no, it's, it's really charming. I, I have to say, it's, yeah. I laughed a lot throughout all of it. And when I wasn't laughing, which happened a lot, to be honest, I was always smiling. Yeah. Uh, and there's some jokes that are so dumb, but that made me laugh every time. They they have a recurring joke about, like, I'm lost. It's like, well, have you tried Hare Krishna? And they keep coming back to that effing joke. And it's not that <laughs> funny, but I don't know what it is about uh, Jim Hansen doing Kermit or and, and, and all, of, all the other puppeteers. They pull that stupid joke off. It made me laugh. I think it's an assault of how many, you know, very, very bad jokes. But if you throw enough of them, you'll end up laughing. You know, the, the one that really got me laughing and started is like, turn left at the fork in the road. <laughs> and there's a giant fork. And not only is there the fork there, but they actually acknowledge it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> you, know, it was, you know, the, oh, look at that really sold it for me. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, eventually you, you just end up smiling. Because, yeah, you know, you know, one joke like that that you just see, like, you know, you, you get a clip on YouTube and you just see that clip of that single joke you'd be like oh, that was stupid but just them all put together and eventually you're like you, you can't help but you know this is really funny yeah, I, I guess you're right um, I watched this movie with my girlfriend and uh, she actually had the reaction of like oh that one made you laugh and I'm like yeah it did I don't know why and the one question was the second time they did the the joke where Kermit going like it's a myth a myth? No, myth, myth. And then Miss Myth come, comes out going, yes. Yeah. And the second time, because she comes out of freaking nowhere the second yeah. time, I laughed. I, I can't explain why. <laughs> Just don't expect it. Okay, okay, they did this joke the first time. It's good. It's done. It's like, no, she's there again. <laughs>
Um, yeah. No, it's funny how much, how, how attached I am to these puppets. I never realized. I mean, as a kid, I did watch the Muppet Show religiously. Yeah. Uh, but watching it again, uh, it, I had the same reaction as when I watched the recent uh, The Muppets, to which Muppets Most Wanted is officially a sequel. Okay. Um, it's just this, like, oh my god, I miss them so much. It's amazing how much I love Kermit and, and uh, the dog. I love the dog, Ralph. Yeah. <laughs> he, he never does anything, and yet I love that dog. Yeah. He has terrible songs. That's pretty much all he has, you know? <laughs> As, but it's and it's seeing them in this movie. What I like about it is that they are given space to breathe, and it is most definitely them. It doesn't feel like them processed through the Hollywood machine. And if if anything, it feels like the Hollywood machine processed through the Jim Hansen company. Yeah, it seems that way. Oh yeah, and, you know you also notice in the movie, big stars from nineteen seventy nine that just show up for cameos, like two or three lines, and then that's it. You know, they have Richard Pryor basically. As a balloon salesman, he just, I think he has two lines and he sells a bunch of balloons to Gonzo and that's it. Neither of which is a joke. That's the thing that really shot me. It's like, okay, the Muppets are known for their cameos. The Muppets movies in general are known for just like assaulting you with cameos. Yeah. But the Richard Pryor one caught me by surprise because he's just there. He's not even doing a bit. I know. <laughs> not funny. The thing is just, no, don't just buy one balloon, buy all of them. And it was like, okay, and that's it. <laughs> Uh, even even Bob Hope had like one joke, you know, with you know honey and ice cream. He was like, okay, yeah. you know, he 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 did this shtick and he went long, but that like, Richard Pryor, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Like arguably one of the funniest men uh, ever to grace the the, the stage as a stand up. It's like no jokes, and I guess that was the joke. I guess yeah. <laughs> I was just, I also love Orson Welles looking terrifying. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's good at that. <laughs> I have to say, though, uh, my favorite cameo has to be uh, Big Bird trying to go to New York because he wants to be on public television. Yeah. <laughs> it's because, it's you know, Kermit goes on the road to become a star in Hollywood. And it's like, they meet B Big Bird and goes like, yeah, I'm following my dream, too. I want to be on public television forever. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he say, like, good luck with that as yeah. well? <laughs> so just move along. <laughs> I don't know. I always assumed that the Sesame Street characters and the Muppets show were, were taking place in the same universe. Sort of, yeah. Because Kermit appears in both, for example. Yeah, you're right. I always assumed, so. Makes sense. I, well, with his new knowledge of Big Bird, that's the way he was invited to do public, you know, television. You know, <laughs> not that they're, they made each other like that. It was easy to get contact. There you go. <laughs> it's so hard to review this movie, I'll be honest, just because... All I can say is it's the Jim Henson company being the Jim Henson company. It's really charming. It's kind of dumb, but not in a, like, yeah. oh, you could have tried harder dumb. No, it's like, wow, you tried really hard to be dumb, and you succeeded. <laughs> I know. Also, the silliness of the overarching plot that this one guy wants him, Kermit, to be the spokesperson for, you know, a frog's leg company. is like, I would not eat... You know, frog, like if a frog told me to eat them, it'd be kind of like, well, will I eventually have to eat the mascot or something? That would seem weird to me. It'd be like a cow telling me to eat burgers, you know? It's just a little odd. I was <laughs> just saying. And then again, I mean, like, <laughs> but, who I, are the mascots of the M&Ms? Two M&Ms. That's a good point. It's not okay, this is a nitpick itself. So it just feels like the, the general big silliness of, you know, is your public really want to start eating frog legs if he, they see that little, little dancing frog over there saying, you know, having that much time? It's like... I don't want to eat it. <laughs> now you have Kermit also thinking that, you know, the frog legs, that, you know, they take the, the, the legs and then they let the frogs go. It's like, yes. yeah, I'm sure that's how it happens. <laughs> yes, that was actually really cute. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cute. <laughs> Getting back to this song, you know, I, I, one of the things is that I was surprised how they're beautiful songs. Yeah, they are. Uh, especially, like, I really love um, the main song, which is... Um, why are there so many songs about rainbows, which uh, Kermit the Frog sings? Yeah. I mean, uh, the lyrics are really cu cute and charming, but the, the melody also is really touching. Like, it's a really, really nice song. Uh, it was nominated for an Oscar, in fact. Didn't win. Rob! I know. Actually, I'm really curious to know what won, you know. I have no something, idea. Something silly, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> that song got dark nighted. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, but it's 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 just such a lovely song. I I would be curious to see as well what won in nineteen seventy nine for best song because I feel that one would be would have been hard to beat. Yeah, well, it's so so appropriate to the movie as well. You know, maybe if you listen to it outside, you know, you probably wouldn't win a Grammy because you know out of context it's kind of weird. But you know, then it, again, the album 
the the soundtrack album did win a Grammy for best children album. Yeah, yeah, but the album puts everything in context, you okay, know. Okay, okay. Whereas a Grammy, you know, just for you know, just, just for the song, just for a song, or just for random listening, you know, it's like, yeah, this is odd. Why is he? Why is he singing about this? You know, whereas in the context of the movie, I think it it fits. So I would see it much better for the Oscar than for a Grammy, for example. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, that's interesting. I, you know, because the movie starts with that song, and you just see a swamp and Kermit singing it. I, I thought it was lovely. Yeah. And then Don Le Louise comes in. And he's lost in a swamp for some reason. Has, has he tried Hare Krishna? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, and then the second song that comes in, uh, uh, Moving Along, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, also surprisingly good like i because i everybody knows why there's so many songs about rainbows because it's such a classic song uh and i remembered that this is going to be a good song so when i heard it i was like oh yeah okay yeah. then uh, when they got to moving along uh, with fozzy bear and kermit i was like wow this is good as well <laughs> it's like how many good songs are in this thing yeah and it kind of you know you hit a dip when you hit mix you yeah. kind of like on a down there but then they pick it back up again afterwards yeah. so it's all good yeah one thing I was a little disappointed at, I'm going to say, the movie starts with the two, the two curmudgeon guys going through security. It's, like it's a private screening. Uh, it has to be private because the movie's going to be terrible or something like that. You know, it's them being, you know, <laughs> super negative about the show and going there nonetheless, which I just love. They're kind of like internet reviewers going to see Twilight and then complaining about it. But <laughs> still, you know, <laughs> they're doing it in a funny way. Yes. And I was, you know, not enough of them in the movie. That's all I'm well, they're your they're your favorite characters, aren't yes. they? Yes, they are. <laughs> You're such a hater, but <laughs> <laughs> it would have been so funny if the if you know Kermit had picked them up at the side of the road. You know, we're going to Hollywood, and I was like, yeah, sure, we'll be your audience. And <laughs> he picks up the two guys that keep complaining about the show, and here's the reason they're there. That would have been just hilarious to me. But yeah, that didn't happen. No, no. <laughs> opportunity missed for an awesome joke. <laughs> like I'm gonna give my final opinion right away, mm-hmm. and we can maybe talk about something else afterwards. But uh, it's just, I uh, yeah, go see it if you have kids. See it with them. It's charming. Yeah. It's sweet. It's so funny. And yes, the rhythm is a bit slower than what uh, we're used to today. Yeah, but that's fine. It'll calm your kids down. They won't be hyper, you know. Yeah, that's it. and that's a quality. Like honestly, the, yeah. like it's it's a slow, relaxed sort of rhythm to it, and that's not a bad thing. Like, why are we in such a hurry for everything? Exactly, you know, and it also it ages very well. I mean, it, there's nothing you can say. Oh, this is you know, besides maybe how they're dressed, you know, in the city and stuff like that. But you you, you can't look at it and say you know this is. This is old stuff. This is ridiculous, you know. Okay, they're they're driving old cars, but they were old even for the time the movie was made. So that's the whole point, you know. Yes, yeah, Studebaker is Studebaker's. Yeah, no, they're <laughs> driving a car from the fifties. The movie is is made, is made in seventy nine. So, you know, it, it hasn't aged at all. You can enjoy it now if you know the characters. You you will love the movie. Yeah, no, I agree. Oh, you remind me of one thing that bugged me. Okay. Um, uh, at one point, they decide to paint the Studebaker yeah. into like multicolors. Oh, that was painful. And then it melds into a joke where they meld into a uh, essentially a billboard. Yeah. And then the next scene, the Studebaker is normal again, and that like that actually bugged me. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I was like, hey, wait, like no, pie in the face does not negate continuity. I want the Studebaker to be weird again. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, because they had to use two Studebakers for the for filming. I read, you know, mm-hmm. one is completely ruined because it's rainbow colored now, <laughs> so it's worth nothing at all. If you love cars, you're like, oh, this is painful. Why are you doing this? <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even notice. That. I didn't catch it. But mm-hmm. I was just, you know, so I guess I was just really in the movie that it's like, yeah, I didn't catch that. that error. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not even sure it's an error. Like it might have been just be like, well, the joke's over, and we're not going to continue the joke. I guess. I- I guess now they're expecting your rainbow car, so let's repaint, let's remove the paint or something, let's wash it off or something. But anyway, um, so okay, so both, uh, two glowing reviews of this uh, recommendations. We got quite a bit of time in front of us, so I thought maybe we'd talk about the one that came before, because Muppets Most Wanted is a direct sequel to just the Muppets that yeah. came out with Amy Adams and uh, Marshall from How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> he has a name. Yeah, what's his name? Jason Siegel. I think. <laughs> no, that's right. That's what it is. That's what it is. Um, I, you know, and he, the thing is, he spearheaded this project. Like he was it, its champion. He he 
He was like, he wrote the thing, he, he helped choose the directors, he produced, and he presented it to Hollywood and fought tooth and nail to get it done. Nice. Which, I guess it's hard, because, I mean, before that, who had, you know, who remembered the Muppets, honestly, really, before that? The last, it, it was quite a while since, you Yeah, know. well, it was, like, in the mid to late 90s, and it was, like, a flop. Yeah. You know? I think he just wanted to compete with Neil Patrick Harris and Smurfs. It's yeah. like, you know, I will, I'll do something better. <laughs> I mean, in, in fairness, I mean, Disney did buy the Muppets and they had been using it on their Disney channel. Uh, like, they, there was a short-lived version of the Muppets show where instead of being in a Amphi theater, yeah. they were on a TV studio and their guests were all Disney Channel stars. So it was okay. a way to promote their Disney Channel stars. But it, it was still the Muppets being the Muppets, though. Like, it still worked. Like, even in that context, yeah. the Muppets were still the Muppets. It's, it's something amazing that Jim Hansen and company created that they can have these characters still work no matter what the context. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like apart from that, that's that's pretty much all that was left of the Muppets until Seagull just like you know pushed it, and the Muppets yeah. was a huge hit, and, and that's why I'm surprised not to see him in the sequel. But he he said like uh, in an interview like when they asked him like how come he's not back, he said I was like no, I did what I wanted. I wanted to bring the Muppets back into public consciousness, and then now that I've done that, other creators can do stuff with them. I'm cool. Nice. <laughs> and you can be surprised watching this movie and, you know, like, oh, this is a fun story. It's, you know, not be involved with everything. You can actually enjoy the final product. And yeah. Stuff, you know? Exactly. And um, I, I got to say, um, The Muppets, having now watched The Muppet movie again, it's amazing how many nods to that movie and to small continuity bits there are in there that I never realized was okay. a, a sort of an inside joke. Because uh, a joke in the Muppets is, uh, you know, they gather the forces again because the Muppets have sort of retired and split off and then they gather them again. Okay. And they have that same joke where the, the dog is just suddenly in the car and they don't explain <laughs> why. <laughs> nice, that's clever. <laughs> and then, like, halfway into the Muppets at one point, it's like, uh, the dog was like, hey, how come we didn't show my story? I was just in the car. I was like, oh, fine. It's like, it was a great story too and then they flash back to his story yeah. and he's like sitting in a hammock and goes like hey we're putting them up it's back together okay that's <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a pretty good story it's the same. very nice yeah uh, stuff about like uh, Gonzo when he retired he became like a master plumber uh, big super chain of toilets and everything it's like again like a nice little nod to his origins in the Muppet movie yeah yeah so I was like, oh my god, like, Siegel really studied his stuff to make it all, like, well, fit. Maybe he didn't even need to study it. Maybe he was just a fan, and he, he knew these things, and he's like, it'll be funny if, and you know, and real people who are fans of the franchise, like, the adults that have followed, that they're bringing their kids along, they'll, they'll get these jokes, and they'll laugh at those, even though they might probably get go over the heads of the kids, you know? Mm. Slightly off topic, I'm sure you probably saw the Smurfs as well, yeah. when it came out. How did the two compare, basically? I think the Smurfs, are, it's kind of weird because they're, they're doing a fish out of water thing. So that's why I wasn't really interested. I'm really not interested now in seeing that, that, that movie at all because I hate fish out of water stuff. Whereas the Muppet, they, they've they always lived in this universe with humans. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But what, what do you think, like comparing the two? Comparing, that's a very interesting question. I What I will say is this. The Muppets, um, like J uh, Jason Siegel's interpretation of them, is true to the original. Okay. It's it it really is like this is a guy who who loved that stuff, breathed it, but more than that, because you can love this the stuff and not understand it. We see fans doing that all the time. Have you yeah. read fan fiction? But in the case of Jason Siegel, like this, no, he gets it. He gets what the Muppets are all about. In the case of the Smurfs, uh, this is a this is really a, a a movie that f's with the original and on every level because you know the Smurfs are supposed to take place in medieval times. Yeah. Uh, it's they do interact with humans, but as like these weird leprechaun-like creatures. That, that that's you, true, you know. And I mean, to be fair, yeah, I want to say to be fair, they, inter they, they interact with cartoon humans, whereas in the movie they're cartoon CGI things and they interact with real humans. I mean, that that's, that's the whole fish out of water thing I'm thinking of, really. But yeah, also they're they're in modern Earth now, yeah. which is really weird, you know. Yeah, I think there's ever a comic I read of the Smurfs that was like, hey, now they're in modern Earth and you with buildings and stuff like that. That would have been weird. No, that's <laughs> it. It's, it's that's not what they're about, yeah. uh, and they're not a, also, you know, like. They took five Smurfs, and they, they're all dressed slightly different, so you can all tell them apart. What's the point, then? <laughs> and exactly. It's like the Smurfs are supposed to be a mass. They're, yeah. they, and they're not about... Here's the thing. Here's why the Smurfs was never going to work as a Hollywood movie. 
the Smurfs are about collectiveness. The Smurfs are about how we are as people, as a mass. How we're, at the heart of it, really stupid creatures as a mass. Okay. That is not something American filmmaking celebrates. It's all about individuality, celebrating the individual. So yeah. then they were ne when they were going to take the Smurfs, they were always going to find a way to make it that, oh, every Smurf is a special snowflake and you too can shine, clumsy Smurf. They were always going to do that, okay. which is anti-Smurf. Yeah. But, you know, in its very nature. Whereas the Muppet, it's a, they're all, they're all special. That's the whole thing. You know, you have your favorite ones, you have your ones, you know, you, you can see, oh, okay. You know, Kermit, you know who he is, Miss Piggy, you know she, who she is. That, that, that seems, goes a lot better, you know, with what Hollywood wants. wants. Exactly. They, they're a better fit and uh, because they were created in Hollywood, you know? That makes sense, yeah. You know? So, yeah, if, if, if you ask me to compare the two, yeah, w I think the main difference is that one Fs with the original <laughs> and one doesn't, you know? All right. That's good. Yeah, I brought it back to the nature of the show. I know. Very, very good. Very good. <laughs> How do you feel about Most Wanted? We've both seen a trailer together. It looks interesting. Uh, I don't know. I'm not honestly a fan of these, you know, Switch you know, character thing. is it, it, The doppelganger Doppelganger plot. thing, yeah, where, you know, there's, you know, one takes the place of the other and he tries to act like them. I'm not a big fan of that, but, they, you know, I can, I can try and look past that and, you know, see where the movie, because, again, they, they promised cameos galore, which they showed a, a few of them, so, um, yeah, I'm willing to give the shot. If the, if the craziness still goes on and then you, they, they keep the cameos crazy like, like they, they did in the previous movies, I'm probably, probably going to give the shot, yes. It's funny, you mentioned the Lemo plot with the doppelganger cliche, and for me that's actually a selling point. Because when they announced the sequel, and that they announced it as like a continuity sequel to The Muppets, as opposed to just another mu movie with Muppets in it, okay, I was a little bit uh, worried that it was going to go all plotty on us when, you know, that's not what The Muppets do. I guess. Not to F with the original, you, you The Muppets still have to be this sort of weird, absurdist uh, sort of humor. Like, you, you, you can't you can't try to make it make sense. That's not what the Muppets do. The yeah. Muppets barely make sense. That's their shtick. And yeah. the sequel needs a plot, because otherwise, how do you differentiate it with the first movie, you know? And But if the idea here is to take a really stupid and inherently lame plot and just, like, well, you know how it works, so we don't need to focus on building the plot. We can just hang jokes on it now. I guess, yeah. That's a good thing in the case of the Muppets. Yeah. Like, that might be the right way to go. I see your point. I see your point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't enjoy in the trailer the part where, you know, Miss Piggy's, there's nothing wrong with Kermit. He's paying so much attention to me. I was like, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Are you looking forward to this movie? I haven't seen the first one. I'm going to have to see the first one, see how the job they did. But, you know, if it's pretty good, yes, I will be, you know, watching that movie. Yeah, well, I uh, I adored uh, The Muppets uh, when it came out two years ago. I'm happy that it did, in fact, revive uh, The the Muppets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Muppets Must Wanted. I'm, I'm, I'm totally into it if they're doing it in the same vein. But then again, you know, like, The Muppets introduced a new Muppet, which is, like, generic Muppet, essentially. He's the main character of The Muppets, and the fact that he was generic was part of the point. And without going to spoilers, it's really part of his character is that he's an everyman. And and then he became part of the Muppets by the end of the movie, and I'm I'm surprised to see him back there. So they, it is a direct sequel because they've added a Muppets to the Muppets show, and he's still there. Yeah. And there was a part of me that's going like, what the hell are you gonna do with him? Like <laughs> his whole shtick is that he had no discernible personality trait. That's sort of so anti Muppet. So I, I'm. I'm enthusiastic, but I have some reservations. Exactly. Uh, next week, we will be talking about the 300 Spartans. A lot of people have written to us to point out, point out to us that 300 is, in a way, a remake of this movie. So when we reviewed 300 for 300 Rise of an Empire, we did not, in fact, touch on the original. Yeah. So we're going back and touching on the original next week. So that's what we're going to do. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to that one, actually. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it'll be slightly more historically accurate. You don't know. <laughs> but we'll find out. Exactly. Until then, um, if you want to write us, uh, share with us your love of the Muppets, uh, you can write us 
at mail at idiomanic.com or post a comment at idiomanic.com. We're also on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. We're also on YouTube. We're also on iTunes. If you could write us an iTunes review, it will help us get the feedback we need to continue uh, make a better product. And if you could like us on f- Facebook, it helps us get the support to continue generating content of absurdist quality. Indeed. Otherwise, I will have no choice but to force Nick to cameo into different podcasts. I would love that. Did you do that? (laughs) (laughs) On that, then, you know, the rest of the characters, even though, okay, on the show she has a crush on him, and, you know, he's kind of eh about it but yeah I don't think you needed like 40 minutes to explain that really well it wasn't 40 minutes in, in, in fairness it, uh, it felt pretty long though. it's actually it's not that long it's one song essentially what it comes down to because yeah. you know he meets her and at that point I don't consider that being focused on the pl- subplot of their love affair because okay. there's they're, they're going after Gonzo who's on the balloons and everything so other all stuff's right. going on at the same yeah, time right. then they go to a restaurant and then it's all about that they have that song and then he, uh, she gets kidnapped, and then it becomes back to the plot with the uh, uh, the frog legs I guy. Mean, I, I still consider that kidnap plot kind of part of their story, though, because may- maybe that's why I thought it was a little long. Because also, you forgot the first rule of remakes, Jill. Don't fuck with the original. Hey everyone, The Muppets Most Wanted is coming to theaters this Friday, and you know what that means? Many, many cameos in this podcast? That would be great, actually. <laughs> I would love if we could pull that off. Unfortunately, I didn't call anyone, so sorry. This oh. is another episode of Don't F with the Original. With Nicholas, I'm the big game correspondent for Idiomatic. And I'm Dimitri, editor-in-chief of Idiomatic.com and movie critic. Now you know the drill, people. When there's a new movie coming out that's part of the big franchise, we take the movie that started it all and give it a look to see what we can expect. And they're sitting, although it's still the movie, and then... The- the Muppet movie starts, so it's a movie within the movie, and in that movie they do the beginning of the Muppet movie, so it's like three layers of movie within the movie, it's like Wars in Inception at this point. Well, actually four, <laughs> we are at Inception, because there's four, because at one point uh, the band reads the script to the movie that is their life, not the movie that they're making within the movie of the movie. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. Yeah, <laughs> this is like equal to Inception at this point. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean... But yeah, it was kind of, yeah, a little meta there. It was kind of, it was amusing, you know. Uh, there's one point I didn't quite like. It, it kind of slowed down there in the middle when they meet Miss Piggy. And, you know, the whole romance thing, you know, it, I thought it, it was, there was a lot more emphasis put on it. Really much of a road movie where Kermit goes from the swamp to California uh, in the longest way possible and then meets each of the Muppets one by one. And it's a sort of series of sketches with lots of cameos, as you pointed out. Yeah. And there you have it. He's being hunted down uh, by a guy who wants to use Kermit uh, to be the spokesperson of his uh, Frog's Legs uh, fast food company. That sounds delicious, actually, honestly. But still, it's kind of weird because Kermit's there, but still, still those, <laughs> those Frog Legs look delicious. <laughs> Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this is not a plot-centric movie. This is a joke-centric movie. Yeah. It's kind of meta as well, because at the beginning you see them, oh, we're going to go watch the Muppet movie. Expect from the new movie. Yeah. And in this case, that means 1979's The Muppet Movie. Indeed. Directed by James Frawley, uh, and the entire Jim Henson production company really being actively involved in it, I imagine. Indeed, yeah, of course. All right, so uh, the Muppets movie is actually an origin story. Yeah. Uh, which uh, surprised me, because believe it or not, I had completely forgotten this movie. I, th- I think I might have seen it on TV when I was a kid, and then yeah. it meld with Muppets in New York and all of them. So Something I, like that, yeah. yeah. You know? But uh, so re-watching it, I discovered, oh, this is an origin story on how the Muppets came together and came to have the Muppets show. Yeah. Or as Kermit says approximately. Roughly, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's released in 1979.